to my channel. Recently, Good Morning America revealed a ton of new information about Encanto, and in this video, I will tell you everything that you need to know. Firstly, it was revealed that the film will leave audiences asking, how well do we know our own families? Directors Jared Bush and Brian Howard came up with the idea for the film and started out by researching their own families. And one of the biggest questions of the movie is, do I really see my family for who they are? Howard said that this is the first time that Disney Animation has tried to handle a large extended family, with Encanto having about a dozen principal characters who are very, very important to the story. However, he also stated that the large number of characters made the film enormously challenging, but the whole team really committed to that from the beginning. It's impressive that this film has so many characters because it would have taken so long to animate. Secondly, GMA revealed new character descriptions and which actor was voicing each character. But before I begin, I just want to congratulate myself for correctly guessing the cast two months ago, and the link to that video is up here if you want to check it out. As previously announced, the lead character Mirabelle will be played by Brooklyn Nine-Nine actress Stephanie Beatrice. Mirabelle is a young girl whom Bush described as imperfect and weird and quirky, but also deeply emotional and incredibly empathetic. Such a complex character required a multifaceted performance, and the directors raved about Stephanie's acting and singing in the film. Bush said that the movie has so many improvised moments and that they were really lucky to have someone who could be that off the cuff, and Castro Smith added that it also completely translated to her vocal performances. She has incredibly vulnerable moments singing, incredibly funny moments singing, there was nothing she couldn't do. Additionally, Fandango recently released a picture of Mirabelle with a toucan of some sort in a barren area. This indicates to me that this scene is after the magic of the Encanto has started to disappear. She also has a very pretty bag that we haven't seen before, and if you look closely, she has embroidered her name on her skirt. Isabella will be played by Orange is the New Black actress Diane Guerrero. Isabella is Mirabelle's older sister, and like so many siblings, they have a complicated relationship. Isabella is smart and brilliant and so perfect that flowers bloom in footsteps. Anything she attempts to do is a success, which is the opposite of what Mirabelle's experience has been in this family. She is in an extraordinary family where everyone is extraordinary, but Isabella is extra, extra, extraordinary. Howard added that Isabella and Mirabelle's relationship is a delicious conflict. Diane had the challenge of playing a lovable character and an antagonist at the same time, but according to Bush, she nailed it. I wasn't expecting Isabella to be an antagonist, but I'm definitely here for it. Sibling conflicts are a major thing in a lot of families, so it will be great to see that on screen. Louisa will be played by Feast of the Seven Fishes actress Jessica Darrow. Louisa is Mirabelle's other sister, who probably has the biggest biceps in Disney history. She's the one in the family that's carrying all the burdens and never complaining. Castro Smith said that Jessica was perfect for the role because she's tough, but also can be really funny and vulnerable. Louisa's song is one of the standouts in the film, with it being described as a crazy visual showpiece. Howard noted that it's just beautiful and colourful, and Jess really owns it. I presume her song is this shot in the teaser trailer featuring her dancing with multiple donkeys. It was also one of the first songs that Lynn wrote for the movie, and he chose a sort of reggaeton-inspired music. This song greatly influenced her character direction, similar to how the song Let It Go changed the character of Elsa. Mirabelle's parents, Julieta and Augustine, will be voiced by Angie Cepeda and Wilma Valderrama, and Mirabelle's grandmother will be played by Maria Cecilia Botero. Now, we didn't get any further details about their characters from GMA, but I did get a tiny bit of new info about the grandmother from a video by YouTuber Lori Cortez. A younger version of the grandmother will feature in the opening scene of the movie, along with grandfather Pedro and baby triplets Julieta, Bruno and Peppa. Now, I won't say much more about this scene as it is a spoiler, but in summary, this scene results in the family getting magic from the candle. The grandmother doesn't have powers, but instead she is the guardian of the candle. Peppa and Felix will be played by Carolina Gaydon and Mardo Castillo. They are Mirabelle's aunt and uncle and are a couple rooted in balance. Peppa is overly dramatic, overly emotional, and for better or worse, her magical gift is that her emotions control the weather. It goes from sunny to hailing to snow to rainbows, and her husband loves that about her. He's just there to have a good time. Bush said that the voice actors were hilarious together, being a fantastic, fun combination. I must say that Felix in particular had a really chill vibe in the trailer, and I'm excited to see their dynamic now the director has talked it up. 
Dolores will be played by singer-actress Adassa. She's the one who's a little bit quiet but also knows everyone's dirt. Castro Smith said that Adassa made Dolores, the daughter of Peppa and Felix, a standout character and that Lynn fell in love with the character and made room for her in some of the songs. After that description, I am even more confident that her power is supersonic hearing, especially considering her clothing has sound wave symbols. Camilo, Mirabelle's cousin with shape-shifting powers, will be played by Renzi Felice. The character came about because the filmmakers were interested in a teen who doesn't quite know who they are yet and are trying on a lot of different personas. Castro Smith said that Renzi is just perfect and is really funny. Antonio will be played by recently announced cast member Ravi Cabot Conyers, who is nine years old and is from the series Hashtag Black AF. Bush said that he makes Antonio a character that people are really going to fall in love with. This boy looks exactly like his animated counterpart and could totally play him in live action. Bush said that in this amazing family, when you receive your magical gift, what comes along with that is a new room for you to use your gifts in. As a member of the family who didn't get a gift, Mirabel didn't graduate from the nursery, so she's been living there with Antonio, her youngest cousin. They have this really, really sweet, amazing relationship. She's almost a big sister to him. Before I move on, I just want to say how mean is it that they make a 15 year old stay in the nursery? Like they couldn't give her an extension on the house or something? Jeez! Anyway, moving on, in another recent interview, director Brian Howard explained that the rooms in the house are like whole worlds. Each of them represents a different place in Colombia, such as the Choco Forest, the rock formations of the Estoraques, and the Medellin Flower Festival, which I presume is Isabella's room. Also, early in the film there will be a party in which Antonio will get his powers and room, which I presume is this forest. Thirdly, GMA gave some more information about the film's setting, Colombia. Lin-Manuel Miranda was very keen to having Canto be a definitive Latin American Disney musical and after careful consideration the team decided to set the movie in Colombia. Howard said that Colombia is the home of magical realism and that really influenced the storytelling in the film and another influence was the fact that Colombia is the crossroads of music, culture and ethnicity. In order to properly pay homage to the country, every frame has something for people to find. There are a lot of textiles throughout the movie and tiny mannerisms that the people of Colombia will recognise, and Colombian terms of endearment and phrases sprinkled throughout the dialogue. Obviously, these references are going to go over my head, but they will be really meaningful to the Colombian people. Fourthly, GMA revealed that in addition to Lynn manuel Miranda writing the film's songs, Jermaine Franco will compose the score. She previously co-wrote the score to Pixar's 2017 film Coco, a film that I personally really enjoyed. We also found out that two of the songs are entirely in Spanish. I really hope they give me subtitles because I can only say like one sentence in Spanish. <laughs> Finally, the GMA article revealed the lasting message of the film. Howard said that Encanto is a celebration of diversity in more ways than one. We thought that with an ensemble cast, what a great opportunity to show this family and how they have succeeded with their differences being so important. Everyone fulfills a purpose in this family and that's one of the beautiful things you discover in the film. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this super long video today. Like this video if you liked it and please subscribe. It would mean so much to me. Bye now and have a magical day.